you cannot have a health relationship with other people unless you have a health relationship with yourself first. And we're going to talk about how to do that by journaling. So welcome to Christianish. This is the podcast for women who have Bibles, but they lack boundaries. My name is Keisha Rice. I am a dating coach and hypnotherapist. I help women learn how to heal from their unhealthy relationship patterns and learn how to attract healthy, cherished relationships. Now, let me start this off by saying that I was never big on journaling myself when I was younger. However, if you know my story, you know that the reason why I became a dating coach in the first place is because I had a quarter life crisis, you know. Everything in my life that could go wrong was going wrong. I was not happy with the situationship that I was in at the time. I was not happy with my job or just in general, the direction that my career was going in. I was having issues with my health. I was having issues with friendships, all of the things. And one day I just broke down crying, asked God like, hey, I don't know what life I want to have, but whatever this is, this I don't want. And, you know, it led to me doing a lot of things, you know, praying more, reading the Bible more, uh, seeing a therapist, getting a coach, all of those things. But one of the other things that it led me to was journaling. And journaling helped me do so much of the inner work that I needed to do in order to create the life that I built for myself now, where I have my own business, I'm happier with my career, you know, I married the love of my life, all of that good stuff. And I want to talk about how journaling can help you and how it's not, you know, just this abstract concept. You know, there is science behind it, and it is also biblically sound as well. So journaling is really essential to your self-love and your self-care routine because we build relationships through time spent. Think about it. If you want to improve your relationship with your family members, with your parents, with siblings, cousins, anyone like that, You would do that by having some family dinners, spending some time on the phone or on FaceTime. When you first start dating someone new, this is how you build the relationship. You spend time on the phone together. You text each other every day. You go out on dates. When you are building friendships, the two of you hang out places together, get coffee, get lunch, all of that. It is no different when it comes to the relationship with yourself You build a relationship with yourself by spending time with yourself. So journaling is just one of those ways in which you spend time with yourself. I mean, essentially journaling is having a conversation with yourself, getting to the root of the things that make you happy, the things that upset you, getting it all out on paper and understanding your own patterns, your own self. You are dating you. You're getting to know you. The second benefit of journaling is that creating a journaling habit is about building discipline. You know, whenever I tell clients that they should journal, this is the first bit of pushback that I normally get early on in my relationship with a client. Because the thing that I hear so often is, well, I don't have time to do that. And you should be journaling exactly for that reason, because you say that you don't have time, because I guarantee you that you can find 10 minutes in your day in which that you can journal. And if that means that you have to wake up 10 minutes earlier in the morning or go to bed 10 minutes later at night, then so be it. But you are building this self-discipline and this discipline habit is going to make you more confident because, you know, that's the other thing that I get all the time. What can I do to be more confident? You build confidence by proving to yourself that you are a trustworthy person. And one of the ways that you prove to yourself that you are trustworthy is by keeping your commitments to yourself. 
So when you commit to yourself that I am somehow going to find 10 minutes a day to journal and you keep that commitment, then you are going to become so much more confident in yourself, in your discernment, and trusting your intuition. The third reason that you should journal, the third benefit, is that, again, you're getting to know yourself. Like I said earlier, journaling is simply a conversation with yourself. And you will be amazed when you are just writing things on paper and you're just allowing it to flow and just come out and you're not censoring yourself, just whatever comes out, comes out. You will be amazed at some of the things that end up coming up, memories that you had forgotten, um, feelings that you've been suppressing. And for whatever reason you thought that you couldn't express, they will start to come out on the paper. And you will start to see certain patterns, certain aspects of yourself that maybe you didn't realize before. And these are the things that are going to allow you to improve your life because you're going to see ways in which you can be better on this journey to becoming the best version of yourself. You know, I always tell my clients that I don't ever want them to change for a man in particular or a man in general, right? I don't want them to change themselves in order to attract a relationship. However, being the best version of yourself, of who you authentically are, will allow you to attract better. And journaling helps you do that because it gives you insight both while you're writing and when you go back later and read your journal entries, it gives you insight into some of your own blind spots, things that you didn't realize about yourself before. <laughs> Journaling, the fourth benefit of it is that it helps you get clear on what you want. Because again, as you're reading back over entries, you'll start to see some things that you feel like you're lacking and you'll pick up on that. Um, and you'll also just make that a journal prompt. What is it that I truly want in a relationship? Why do I want these things? And as you start to do that, you'll start to see things like, I say I want this in a relationship, but when I look at my past relationships, you know, there have been men that didn't have this attribute that I was perfectly happy with. Or... You know, I say I want these things, but some of the things that I've noticed when I journal about my past relationships is every man I dated, I realized that he lacked this and I really need this thing going forward in a relationship. So, you know, you start to get really clear on what are the things that you want, what are the things that you need in a relationship as you get to know yourself better, back to the previous point. As you get to know yourself better, you'll start to realize, okay, if these are things that make me happy, or if this is who I am, then what qualities do I need in a partner that can support that? So this will truly help you make your love list, which again is a journal prompt in itself. What is my love list of things that I want in a relationship? But the more that you journal, the more you're going to be able to refine that and get really clear on what your priorities are. Now, the sixth benefit, uh, I believe we're on number six, of journaling is that it will open up your feminine energy and it will open up your creativity. There is a book, I am sure you've probably heard of it because it is a very well-known book. It's called The Artist's Way. And this book is like the ultimate for any person who is a creative. Um, pretty much every creative I know in my life has read that book um, there's also a companion journal. Most of the people I know that are entrepreneurs, are creatives, have also done the journal. And one of the things that you will find in the artist way is that it asks you to do morning pages, three pages every single morning, just write about whatever. It really doesn't matter. And the whole concept is a thing called free writing, which I honestly used to think was BS when I first heard of it, but then I started free writing myself and it was, it amazed me of the things that came out. Like 
I would open up a notebook and be like, I have absolutely nothing to write about, right? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to write about. And I would just start with my grocery list. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm writing random things I need to pick up at the grocery store and something would come out like, and I don't know why I'm doing this anyways, because he has free time, like talking about my husband and realizing that that particular week I should have just, instead of having some resentment about it, because the way our schedules worked that particular week, you know, I should have just asked my husband to go to the grocery store because I was busy, you know, but things like that, like just things like that would, would come out and I'd be like, oh, okay, this is something that I need to work on. But also, you know, not just feelings that I was stuffing and not expressing, but some of my best ideas, um, ideas for videos or podcasts or ideas in my other job, you know, as a journalist, um, a lot of them come out of just that free writing. Um, I have so many projects that I'm working on now that I hope I will be able to tell you about later that have come out of free writing. So just even if you don't go out and buy a fancy journal, and in fact, I kind of recommend that you don't because I don't know about you, but it kind of gets me into this headspace of like, oh, this journal is so pretty and now I have to write pretty things in it. Um, getting like a cheap spiral notebook from the dollar store or whatever and just writing whatever comes to mind, um, it just allows you to brain dump and gives you so much more space. And doing that unlocks your creativity, which is part of feminine energy in itself. But you are also making space for yourself. You're allowing yourself to be present in the moment, whatever your brain is thinking of, just focusing on that and not whatever else is going on around you. And you are also clearing the space in your head for you to do other things. Um, you know, we talk so much about soft life and there's this misconception that soft life is about like finding a man to provide for you and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But part of living a soft life is being able to get out of your head. And that is what journaling does because it allows you to dump all the stuff that's in your brain just onto a piece of paper so that it is no longer bottling up. <laughs> The other way in which journaling is a benefit is for those of us who are religious or who are spiritual, journaling helps you improve your relationship with God because you are able to write down Bible verses that, you know, allow you that you really want to remember. Or again, for those of my non-Christian girlies um, write down verses from the Torah or from Hindu texts, from uh, the Quran, any any religious text that you can think of. For my spiritual girlies, you can write Neville Goddard or you know any of any quotes from The Secret. Whatever your beliefs, there are things that you can write down, right? And doing so, you can write down those verses. You can remember. You can remind yourself of God's faithfulness. You can remind yourself of times in the past where you thought that you would never get through a situation and you got through that and how you healed, how you got better, you can, you can slow down. You know, we get in these situations where life has us feeling like we're so busy and doing this allows you to take the time to reconnect with your source, with God, with, you know, that inner knowing, that inner being that you've always had since the beginning. And knowing that you are connected to something that is so much just, that's so much deeper than just you and your body, right? You know, there's a verse, uh, Psalm, I wrote this down, Psalm 111 and 12, that talks about writing down and pondering God's great works. And when we are so busy just running around, we don't really have the time to get in a space of gratitude. And journaling allows you to sit down and do that. 
journaling, uh, another benefit, it allows you to improve your relationships with others. So again, you know, I mentioned the whole story about having a time where I was resenting my husband for something that wasn't his fault. You know, our schedules worked out that I was busier that week. And all I really needed to do was just ask him to run that particular air and go to the grocery store. And he would have done it, no problem. It, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But for whatever reason, I didn't feel at the time that I could do that. And, you know, sometimes journaling allows us to see that there are things in relationships that we need to work on. But also when we do know the things and you want to have a conversation with someone, say you need to set a clear boundary or you need to let someone know that something that they did even if they didn't intend to be offensive, they did offend you. Journaling allows you to gain some clarity on that conversation um, and get your mind right before you have that conversation so that you can come to it from a place of being calm, cool, collected, and being empowered and not coming from a place of, <clears throat> I hate to say be emotional because people at like there's a problem with emotions. You're allowed to feel your feelings, but to come from a place of having your emotions in control. So being able to journal before you have the conversation just allows you to really get your thoughts out and organize them in a better way. So if you would like help with journaling, I happen to have two journals myself. One is all about ending your self-sabotaging behaviors. The other one is about healing from a breakup. I will put both of those in. If you're watching this on YouTube, the description to the video, if you're listening to the podcast, then it will be in the podcast show notes. So either way, but you know, there are plenty of great journals out there that you can check out. And again, I recommend that sometimes you just free write. Just whatever comes to mind, allow it to come out of your head. So if you want more content on journaling and more journaling prompts beyond what I have in those two journals, let me know and I can definitely do more videos on the future. And in the meantime, if you're watching this on YouTube, please leave a comment, something that you've learned, uh, something that you want to journal about because that helps get this out to more people, the fact that you are engaging with me. And if you are listening to the podcast, please leave a review so that uh, Christianish gets out to more women who can benefit from it. And sharing is caring. So share this episode, whether you share it on YouTube or whether you share the podcast. I love you guys so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.